Hello everyone. We have started cash flow statement and in previous lecture we have seen that why company they prepare cash flow statement and what is the important and importance and logic behind preparation of cash flow statement. In today's lecture we will be discussing the fit of cash flow statement and also we will see the methods of cash flow statement preparation. So you can see there are two methods of preparation of cash flow statement. I have highlighted those methods. First method is direct method. If you want to prepare your cash flow statement, you can follow direct method. And another method is indirect method. Now you might be thinking that what is the difference between direct method or indirect method or what are direct and indirect methods? In detail, we will discuss about direct and indirect method. But I want to tell you that all companies, they follow indirect method. There are very rare companies who follow direct method. Other is all companies, they prepare their cash flow statement by using indirect method. First, I will discuss indirect method and after that, I will start direct method. So right, discussing about indirect method. Now, we have already seen that cash flow statement is divided into three activities. First activity is operating activity. We have not discussed about any of these activities, but I have given you the brief. I have given you the idea that cash flow statement is divided into three days. Then second activity is investing activity. So first activity is operating, second is investing and third activity is financing activity. Now, so in this session, we will discuss about operating activity right? and in coming sessions, we will discuss about investing and financing activity. Now, what is operating activity? So from the name, you will be able to understand that we have to record the transactions which are related to operations, which are related to day-to-day -day business transactions. So in operating activity, what we do, we try to find out cash profit of the business, right? When we prepare a PL account, we calculate PAT. How we can PAT? We uh, reduce all the expenses from income and we calculate PAT. That PAT uh, includes several non-cash transactions, right? That PAT includes several non-transactions like uh, depreciation, provision, amortization, and they include, include some other transactions also. So we will learn how to calculate cash profit from cash flow statement first. So we are discussing about operating activity. Now we will see which transaction we have to record in operating activity. So the very first item which we will record here is profit before tax. You might be thinking that why we are showing profit before tax because we are trying to find out cash profit. So we will take this profit before tax directly from PL account. You know that we calculate uh, before tax in PL account. So we will take profit before tax and here what we will do first we will adjust, you can say add or subtract, we have adjust non-cash transactions, adjust non-cash transaction. You know, profit and loss account, it includes non-cash transactions also due to with the help of profit and loss account, we, we are not able to calculate, we don't able to calculate uh, cash profit, right? So we will be adding back on, uh, or we will adjust non-cash transaction. So what are those cash transactions? So first we will add depreciation. Now you might be thinking that why we are adding depreciation, you know, depreciation or amortization, they are non-cash transactions, right? And when we calculate it, before tax or profit after tax, what we do, we adjust depreciation, right? So if depreciation is non-cash transaction and we are recording in PL account, it means we are reducing our profit because it's an expense. And how we calculate profit? We calculate profit by reducing expenses from our incomes. So the reason we are adding back because we have reduced in PL account. Then we will be adding back provisions also if company has created any provisions. So we will be adding back those provisions in operating activity, then there could be some other uh, trans deferred expense return off. Deferred expense return off. You might be knowing about deferred expense return off. Deferred expense basically we show in PL account the right of these expenses every year, right? So generally pre-incorporation expenses. If I talk about pre-incorporation expenses, what organization do whatever expenses organization they have incurred for starting their business. They capitalize that, their, uh, that expense in balance sheet and in number of years, what uh, organization do they write off that expenses, right? So let's suppose company has incurred, I'm giving you just a idea. Let's suppose company has started their business on 1st April 2021. And here company has incurred post 5 crore rupees 
to start their business right to start they have incurred many other expenses there are legal expenses to needs to incur before starting their business so this is going to be pre uh, commencing business this is going to be pre commencing business and comp what company do instead of recording this expense is your company capitalize this expense so company will show this as a deferred expenses in asset side in 5 years what company do company write off these expenses so every year company will be writing off 1 crore 1 crore 1 crore 1 crore for 5 years so if you see company has incurred this expense the starting of business but company will be recording this as a expense in coming years in year 21 22 2023 20, so there will be no actual cash outflow in these years when uh, there was a cash outflow cash outflow before 1st april 2021 but company is recording it as a expense in coming years right so here this is a non cash transaction so company will be adding back this transactions right company and there there could be several other uh, transaction also i'm giving you exhaustive list we will do, uh, discuss a few cases here you will get to know about more transactions after that what company will do company will adjust other activity transactions company will adjust other activity transactions right now if i talk about what could be the other activity transaction if i talk about uh company has earned in uh, interest income let's suppose here company is a manufacturing company i'm taking example of double limited company is earning interest income you just let me know whether interest income is a business income or it's a investment income company has given loan to some party and uh, company is getting interest from that party right for their advance or so that will be an investment income that will be a investment income right company is invested in shares of company and company is receiving dividend right so whenever we prepare pnl account we show interest and dividend income in other income column right so our profit before tax includes the comes also so what we have to do we have to adjust these incomes so interest income is not a part of operating activity right so it will be transferred in investing activity so here reduce this interest income because it is not a part of uh, investing activity right talk about interest this is interest income right interest income if i talk about dividend income dividend income is also not a part of operating activity so we have already included dividend income uh, in pbt so we will add back and we will show this income in investing activity right now company pays interest on right company borrows loan from uh, other companies or other banks and they run their business if company is paying interest right so interest payment company has borrowed some loan it is it is a part of financing activity right it is not a part of operating activity if company is borrowing some loan so here what we will we will add back interest expense right we will add back interest expense you might be thinking why we are adding interest expense here you know this is a part of uh, financing activity so interest we have paid we don't have to show in operating activity right so it is a part of uh, financing activity and we have already when we were preparing pnl account we have already reduced interest expenses there so if we are doing anything which we have reduced in pnl account we will adding back here right which is not a part of operating activity so this will be a part of financing activity this will be a part of financing activity any dividend paid by company any dividend paid by company generally uh, we don't ship dividend inside the pnl account so uh, it is not a part of uh, this profit before after profit before tax calculation we pay uh, dividend so i am writing here for your understanding there will be no adjustment of dividend expense now sometimes company earn profit sometimes company earn profit on sale of their asset or sometimes company uh, uh, incurs losses on sale of assets so those losses and profits uh, will be adjusted in operating activity because sale of asset is an investing activity right it's a part it's a part of investment so if company is incurring any losses losses on sale of asset so it's a part of investing activity and we can't adjust this amount here right it's a part of investing activity so we won't, we don't have to adjust this amount here right so we'll be adding back loss if there is any gain on sale of asset so that gain will be adjusted gain on sale of asset it will be adjusted here right so this is how we will be uh, calc we will be calculating operating profit now one more transaction we have to adjust here that is changes in working capital we have to adjust changes in working 
capital. In detail, we will see the changes in working capital in next lecture, right? So what to do? We have to adjust non-cash transaction from profit before tax. We have to adjust other active transaction, other activity means active uh, transaction, which belongs to other activity. We have to add back or we have to reduce transaction also, and we have to adjust changes in working capital. So we have not discussed changes in working capital yet. We will be in next lecture. Thank you.